Hey, what do you want to do today? We can do whatever you want. I'm good with anything. Go to the mall? Go to the movies? Go to a pumpkin patch? Yes! Let's freaking go! Wow, really? I didn't think you'd be so excited about this. Wait, what? Introducing Flip Kings, a new poker-based app that offers its users up to 85% rate back. Complete your daily quest to earn cash rewards. Breed your NFT collection to trade for real money. Level up your NFTs for even more monthly rewards. Stay active on their social media sites to gain even more income. And finally, Flip Kings and I are giving away 10 player NFTs each loaded with $50 in tokens. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity. Click the link in the description below to join the giveaway and win big today. Wasn't this so much, Wasn't this so much fun? Huh? Yes, this is the greatest. Flip Kings, play poker anywhere. Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 167 of my poker vlog. As you have seen, I have a new sponsor on the channel. So if you'd like any more information on the Flip Kings giveaway, please follow the description below or message me. Otherwise, we're going to get right into some poker hands. First hand of note. We're in middle position. We're at the 2-5 table. With king, queen of clubs, we raised to $20. The button decides to make the call before the big blind three bets to 100. We get to play the rest of the hand in position, so I think this is a fine call. My opponent is by no means a nit and definitely pervy to some three bets, so king, queen of clubs will be a defend from us. The button decides to fold, so we are heads up to a flop of 10-9 deuce with one club. So we have a gut shot, two overs, back to our clubs. Not the worst board. Additionally, I think this favors a preflop opener rather than a three better. I have all the sets. I have jack eight, seven eight, jack queen. All the draws, two pairs, sets. You get the idea. So I'm kind of surprised to see my opponent bet $115. Either way, with my exact hand and all the equity it has, I'm definitely calling this street. When I make the call, the turn is the seven of spades. I expect my opponent to check here most of the time, me bet and just win, but he surprises me by continuing for $220. Oh, surprised, aren't you? I knew you would be. This is really not the board I expect a three better to go two streets on. If anyone has jack eight or 10 nine, it's definitely gonna be me over my opponent. So with a nut advantage, I'm definitely scratching my head a little bit, but I suppose he might just be going for max protection with like jacks and queens maybe. So because the seven was spades and not clubs, I decide to let this one go. And my opponent mucks, so we'll never know what he had, but not the best start for us. After that, we arrive on the button with seven, eight of diamonds. An early position player makes it $30 over my button straddle. I'm gonna defend this one, suited connectors are beautiful. So we are heads up to a flop of jack, seven, six, two clubs. My opponent continues for $25, and I took a little bit of a passive route in the last one. This, again, a middling board that I think favors me over my opponent, who isn't the aggressor. So this is going to be the time I take an aggressive route with my hand. I raise to $80. It's not going to get the job done just yet. My opponent makes the call, so we're still heads up to a turn card. Would love it to be a good one. And it kind of is. The 10 of hearts is above average, I would say. Gives me a gut shot to go with a middling pair. And when my opponent checks to me, I think he has all the ace-king, ace-queen, which I'm ahead of. Would love to get folds out of. Even single jacks are going to have a tough time hanging on as I have all the straights, two pairs, sets. You get the idea. I continue for $175. And this puts my opponent into the tank. He thinks for a long time, counts out the chips, looks at his cards, looks at his chips. Really not sure which direction he's going to go with it. But he eventually folds. All right, seems like a good pickup with just a pair of sevens. I'll take it. The next fun hand of poker, I'm under the gun with pocket tens. I raised to $20. The button is the only caller, so we end up going heads up to a flop of ace, seven, four with two hearts. Do have the 10 of hearts, so not too concerned about flush draws. 
This is a board where I think I'm going to be way ahead or way behind, and I would check some of my aces some of the time here, go for my street of pot control on the flop. So I think tens is a very natural check here. Can happily check call an opponent's C-bet with when he bets a variety of holdings. But when I check, he checks it back. So we are heads up to a turn card, which is the eight of diamonds. Only one over card to tens feels pretty good at this point. I expect my opponent to bet most of his aces, especially with an obvious heart draw out there. So I think I could go for some pretty safe value of $30. My opponent doesn't think too long before flicking in the call, and the river is the eight of spades. Don't really expect my opponent to have trips here all too often, but I do expect him to have like six, seven, pocket fives, pocket sixes, maybe nines at some frequency, sometimes king x of hearts that might even pay off a smaller size river bet. So I'm going with some value with these tens. I checked the flop so I can go for two streets of value, and the river will be the second street. I bet $80. My opponent flicks it in. I announce tens, and he has... Ace Jack off suit. Definitely a hand I expect this opponent to three bet, at least at some frequency, and really don't expect him to check back flop all too often. So, well played by my opponent. He gets probably the max against pocket tens on this one. Luckily for me, I win two smaller size pots before we arrive at the next hand of note. With a button straddle, there's one limp. I looked down at pocket fours in middle position. I raised to $45. Be happy to take it down right here. Otherwise, we'll get to play a pocket pair, which is generally pretty easy to play and navigate. The bun straddler folds, but the limper from the small blind decides to call. So we are heads up to a flop of queen, jack, jack, two hearts. When it checks to me, aggression is the way I've been winning today, so we're going to continue the story. I think this board favors me. I have all the jacks in range, ace, king, ace, queen, over pairs. So I throw out a bet of $60. My opponent decides to call, not too happy about that, and the turn is the eight of clubs. When my opponent checks to me, I think I have to charge him a second time. He could easily have any two hearts, any two clubs. Maybe a sticky queen will fold to a second barrel at least some percentage of the time, as I could easily just have ace jack here. So I continue for $135. This is not going to be enough. My opponent calls without too much hesitation, really not too happy about that, really hoping for... I guess just a four on the river, but the river is the eight of spades. So double paired board, I have the board, but this card is interesting because the hearts and the clubs missed. As well as it being double board, when my opponent checks to me, I would definitely fire here if I had a jack. So needing to find some bluffs to balance that out, I guess pocket fours is it. Additionally, it would be devastating if my opponent had just like ace king and it went check check, ace high hearts, ace high clubs. Maybe even 10-9 fold at some frequency when the board double pairs like this. Additionally, don't want a queen to be able to get to showdown with an easy decision. So I load up, gather my troops, and send 360 of them into the middle. It's going to be hard fought to win this pot, but we're going to find some triple barrels some of the time. This is going to be one of them. My opponent thinks for not too long, looks at his cards, and then folds face up king-10 of hearts. So glad I went for the third barrel. It would be disastrous to lose this one to King High. Next hand of note. I'm in the small blind. I look down at pocket tens with an under the gun straddle. The plus one player raises to $55. I call as I think three betting out of the small blind is kind of dicey. So I'd rather just set mine and evaluate our hand post flop. When I call the straddler calls as well. So we end up going three ways to a bink jack 10 deuce two spade board but i feel so much better now we have pretty much the nuts here unless we run into pocket jacks and in that case it's just not our day but i check in flow and it checks all the way to the pre-flop aggressor who throws out 150 dollars just about a pot size bet very strong looking honestly feels a lot like kings or aces i think he has an over pair so not too concerned about a flush draw right now I think this hand functions better as a call and reevaluate on the turn. So I decided to call for the 150. The under the gun straddler size to fold. We are heads up to a turn card. I hope it's clean. Four of hearts above average, but the board's getting a lot more draw heavy. There's heart draw, spade draw, plenty of Broadway straight draws. So although I don't have the pre flop aggression, I check. My opponent throws out $300. He is claiming he's got an overpair, pocket jacks maybe ace king of hearts or spades i think the only option with this exact board is to go for it right now i announce all in definitely don't want like 
the nine of hearts to hit the river and then really not really know where i'm at additionally any ace or king's probably bad lose to some over pairs that make a set so stuffing all the money in now when we're confident we have the best hand seems like the only appropriate action my opponent goes deep into the tank thinks for about 45 seconds the all-in is for approximately 800 more dollars effective so not even a huge all-in but my opponent eventually folds says it was a very tight fold don't really like hearing that but either way we take down a pretty decently sized pot and our stack's looking pretty good in for 1500 right now but definitely in profitsville before the next interesting hand an early position player raised to 20 dollars i have jack queen off suit in middle position i call we end up going heads up to a flop of king eight five rainbow when my opponent checks to me i'm just gonna start betting here i don't think this opponent checks a king or any strong hand all too often so i can throw out a bet of 30 dollars when my opponent makes the call we are heads up to a turn card which is the seven of clubs i'm gonna keep telling the story if i had like eight seven six four king jack king queen plenty of hands out throughout the second barrel here all sets and i guess my bluffs include queen jack off suit so i bet 85 dollars my opponent calls he's a disbeliever we are still heads up to river card which is the nine of hearts when my opponent checks to me for a third time i do think if he had a hand like ace ten of clubs it might play the same way maybe weak kings weak jacks and queens Hands that I think can call two barrels, but have to fold the river. So I throw out the third barrel. Triple barrel bluffing seems to be the recipe for today. I put out $250. I would do this with 8-9, 8-7, 8-6, and my best kings, as well as some miscellaneous bluffs like I have here. I don't think my opponent's too strong. I think it's really hard to call here. I could easily have 7-6 here as played, so kind of surprised to see my opponent call. Goodbye. Bye bye. Goodbye, cruel bye world. Bye bye, cruel world. Goodbye to life. Bye bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. I just announced you're good. I show my hand. I want to see what he's playing. And he has King 10 of spades. So my opponent's line of check calling down with his weakish king definitely gets him paid in this one. So congrats to that guy. A final hand of note. An early position player raised to $20. I have pocket kings in middle position. Yes, a premium, finally. I raised to $65. The cutoff cold calls. Interesting. And then the early position player calls as well. We end up going three ways to a flop of queen 10 4 rainbow. When it checks to me, I think my hand requires some level of protection. A jack 9 8 ace. Plenty of bad turn cards from my exact hand can get value from ace queen, king queen, maybe jack nine, king jack. So I throw out $75, betting small, would love to get the sound of heads up right now, but the cutoff decides to raise to 200. All right, this opponent is very bluff happy. He has tons of bluffs in his range. If he senses weakness, he would raise here with like five, six offsuit. So not giving up just yet. I decide to make the call for $200. The other player decides to fold, so we're heads up to a turn card, which is the Ace of Hearts. Not anymore. Not my favorite for obvious reasons. Maybe my opponent has Ace Jack here some of the time. Somewhat creative bluff. But it does give me a gut shot, as well as a King should be good here most of the time. However, my opponent doesn't slow down. When I check to him, he bets $200 again. Same size. In general, I think these same size bets are value, but very weak. I think my opponent could easily have queen jack, king queen, maybe 10 jack, 10 king. Pair plus straight draws that I'm beating, I think play the same way. As well as he does have full air sometimes. This opponent literally has 5-6 some of the time, so I can't give up just yet. I make the call, and the river is the five of clubs. When I check to my opponent, he does not check it back. Instead, he bets $250. Ugh, I've kind of put myself in a bad spot here. I'm getting 5-1 to one on a call against someone who has a ton of bluffs, but is he ever bluffing for this size? Probably not, but honestly, maybe 1 in 5 times he is. So I decide to flick in the call. Gotta see this one. And he has pocket queens. And what did Santa bring you, honey? So I guess I'm destined to lose some amount of money no matter what when I run kings into queens on a queen high flop. Sure, I can fold sometimes on the turn, sometimes on the river, but I think this hand is played fine either way. 
Unfortunately for me, I am well lower than my high point. I'm actually down $1,100 on the day, which across five hours equates to $220 an hour or 44 big blinds an hour going the other direction. Yeah, it's definitely disappointing to book three losses in a row, at least from the video aspect of making a vlog. But honestly, all of my other sessions that aren't filmed have been incredibly profitable. The pictures being shown are all from different sessions where I've absolutely been crushing. So one hand from a room where I'm not allowed to film was too interesting not to make the vlog. So here is your bonus hand. I'm in the big blind with eight, seven of diamonds. And when it folds all the way to the button, he limps, small blind limps. So I'm gonna raise, I have suited connectors. Seems pretty good. I make it 30, both players call. Three ways to a flop. Flop comes 10, 8, 4 with two clubs. All right, we have middle pair. We have backdoor flush draw. Seems pretty good. When it checks to me, I'm just going to continue for $45. My opponent's missed a lot of the time. We probably win here a decent percentage of the time. The button folds, but then the small blind raises to $125. Definitely not the most comfortable spot. He could have just a random 10 here some of the time and do this raise. But with plenty of other draws available, we're just going to call this one and reevaluate on the turn. When I call it, the turn is the five of diamonds. Probably the ginnest card we could hope for. Flush draw, straight draw, straight flush draw, everything. We pretty much can't fold now. And that thinking is going to continue when my opponent bets $300. Large bet, but... With all the equity we picked up, we really can't fold at this spot. The river is a brick, five of spades, and now my opponent jams for $600 effective. Puts me all in. And this is where the hand is very, very interesting. Because the raise flop and continue continue is pretty strong, I'd say this makes the hand very polar, meaning my opponent either has a nutted hand or a bluff. So at this point, you have to consider is your opponent the type of person who has the ability to bluff or even do a triple barrel? Not many people do. And if you've played poker more than like six or seven sessions, you've probably seen the player type that just has no bluffs. My opponent in this hand is definitely capable, definitely competent, not a nit by any means. He has all the bluffs in range. So now we have to count the combinations of value versus bluff to decide if we're going to call. The only nutted hands that can really go three streets right here are pocket tens, pocket fours, ace five of clubs specifically, and maybe four or five of clubs specifically. That comes out to approximately nine combinations of value hands that could take this line, adding one for pocket eights as there's only one of those available as well. We have to use all the information from every street of this hand to decide the plausible hands my opponent could have. Remember pre-flop, it was a limp call of 30. This opponent probably doesn't have pocket tens or pocket eights with that line. Pocket fours, Somewhat reasonable, I think that one might limp call pre-flop. And then when he raises flop, he really can't have ace five offsuit, that makes no sense. Ace five of clubs, somewhat reasonable, but maybe not limped pre-flop again. Four or five of clubs, that one also pretty reasonable. So the value that seems to be most possible is four or five of clubs or pocket fours, maybe two actual hands. But the bluffs consist of jack nine offsuit, nine seven offsuit, any two clubs. So all in all, I would estimate there's about 60 combinations of hands that, that can take this bluffing line on this exact board and only about three or four hands that can really make this line for value. With all that said, I side put it in there and my opponent does indeed have jack nine off suit. This hand was definitely the hand of my session, probably the hand of my month so far in terms of interest. And if you don't already follow me on Instagram, I posted it there in real time. Plenty of other hand histories I post, so feel free to follow me there if you want even more content. My next video will be a win from Sarasota. It'll be a fun little hit and run I'm excited to share with you. So if you made it to this point, thank you. Be on the lookout for that video, and I will see you on the next one.